Good day, mates. How you doing? This is Tom Stiles, and this is Tom's Radio Room Show. And what you're looking at is my Bofang UV5R transceiver, handheld portable transceiver, and my Radio Shack Pro 404 scanner radio. And the question is, and I'll give you a little background how this came up for me, is I'm always looking for radios, unusual radios, to buy and review on my show. You know, they don't necessarily have to be new radios, they could be old radios. And basically in two areas, one is shortwave radios and or ham radios, and the second one is scanner radios. And actually this radio here I got off of eBay. Uh, I think I paid about $20 for it, plus maybe $5 shipping, I think, about $25. It's used. It's no longer um, manufactured. Well, you know, kind of what the status of Radio Shack is. But, and I'll get to it later, there is a replacement for this radio. Okay. So anyway, when I'm doing searches for scanner radios, this radio, or one like it, comes up a lot, about 60% of the time. And my concern is, I don't think this really should be classified as a scanner radio. And I'm, today, I'm going to try to explain how I came to that conclusion. And Maybe it's the wrong conclusion. I'm, I'm looking for feedback here. What do you think? And there are some conditions that can wave you either way. And I'll get into some of those. So let's put these radios back here a little bit so I don't knock them over. And move my stormtrooper out of the way. Thank you very much. And here's what I've come up with. And I'm going to see if I can try to get this in the screen here. Let me uh, do a little moving around here, stand by, and we need some a good cameraman. Okay, I got most of it. Mm, cutting off a little bit there. Okay, hopefully you can read it. And the question is, are the Bofang radios scanner radios? Are they? Should they be classified as scanner radios? Okay, let's go over some things. And I'll zoom in a little more, so maybe maybe you can read this. So here's some features I want to talk about. And compare the, in this case, the Pro 404 with the Bofang UV5R. Okay, so the first topic is frequencies or bands that the radios cover. The 404 covers 29 to 54 megahertz and 108 to 174 megahertz, and finally 380 to 512 megahertz. Doesn't go above 512 megahertz. Most of your new new scanners do go above 512 megahertz, but older technology only went to 512. The Bofang has an, the FM band, 65 to 108 megahertz, the two meter Amateur band and a little bit below and a little bit above that band, which is 136 to 174, and the 70 centimeter amateur band and a little beyond that, 400 megahertz to 480. Because it's originally designed to be a handheld amateur radio transceiver. So I say, based on the multiple bands and a larger, larger coverage. And again, we're talking about getting a radio to use as a scanner, not necessarily as a transceiver. I would say the winner in that case is the 404. Now, one, one little caveat that I want to mention at this point is the advantage of the Bofang radio is that it is a transceiver. So if you 
bought it for transmitting on the amateur bands. Okay, that's one thing. And then it does have a limited capability of scanning. But if you're looking for a scanner and you go on eBay and you see these all these hundreds and hundreds of Bofang radios listed, I'm here to tell you it's not a very good scanner. Let's go on. Squelch. Squelch in the use of a scanner is very, very important so that you can program 100, 200 channels and it doesn't stop on channels that just have background noise. So you can tune up, turn up that squelch and it'll skip over those channels until it finds a channel which has got a strong signal. So that's what the squelch is doing for you. On the Pro 404, it's variable, it's an analog. So you, you've got this knob right here, which is your squelch knob, and it's analog. So it's infinitely variable, shall I say. On the Bofang, it's digital steps. And there aren't many steps. And uh, besides that, it, my opinion on the UV5R, the squelch doesn't work that good. It can't kind of fine tune it in so that a medium strong signal will come through. It's like there or it's not there, almost. But it does have steps. So I would say the Pro 404 wins as far as squelch. The next one, which is not totally important, but necessary, is the number of channels. And the 404 scanner has 200. The Bofang has 128. I think 128 is adequate. But since the 404 has more, considerably more, I'm going to give the Pro 404 that score. Next is sensitivity, and this is very important. And the if you look at the uh, 404 manual, it has several ranges of sensitivity depending on frequency, which is a, probably a more accurate spec. And it's excuse me, it's point. 5 microvolts, the best one, and I can't remember which range that was. The Bofang has in the manual listed 0.2, which is better, but it doesn't really tell you over what range it is 0.2. The sensitivity is that good. Now, the Bofang, you can also, if you have the programming software, software you can extend these ranges a little bit, but sensitivity is going to drop down to almost nothing. So based on the raw numbers from the manuals, I have to give that to the UV5R, the, two versus, the 0.2 versus the 0.5. In reality, I don't really believe either one of these numbers. Okay, search capability, being able to say, Start at this frequency and go to this frequency and search through that, that those frequencies. Say, you know, start at 108 megahertz and search up to 174 megahertz. That's what I call a search capability. Yes, the Pro 404 and most scanners have that capability. The Bofang, to my knowledge, doesn't have that capability. Maybe I missed it in the manual or something doesn't have that capability. So that goes to the Pro 404. Locking out channels that you programmed. How difficult is that to do? With the 404, yes you can do that and it's very simple. Is that when you're scanning um, and you find a memory channel that um, you programmed and it turns out it's a lot of noise you can just hit the lockout button. It has a lockout button. Hit that button, it's locked out. Simple as that. On the Bofang, yes, you can lock them out, but you can only do it 
using a cable uh, to connect it to your PC and some software to set that up. Otherwise, when you do the scan, it's going to scan every memory location that you programmed. Not too useful if you don't have the cable. And I've done that because I have um, a couple of channels I have in my Bofang is uh, WWV. I mean, excuse me, no uh, weather frequencies. And so I use the software to lock those out when scanning. Okay. So the Pro 404 wins that. Kind of see a trend here. Again, this is my opinion. Okay. Scanning speed. How f When you're in the scan mode on these radios, how fast does it scan through the channels? And, and that really comes into play when um, you've got a bunch of frequencies programmed in and you want to get through those quickly so that it, you don't miss one. You know, say you have, you know, some activity on channel two, and you just passed it. How long is it going to take you, the radio, to get back to channel two? Okay. On the 404, it can scan up to. This is what the manual says: up to 40 channels per second. Fairly fast, not real fast. I mean, I have scanners that will scan up to 200 channels per second. So. It's okay. Uh, the Bofang, maybe it can, it doesn't specify it in the manual. Maybe from my listening, two channels per second. Really slow. So if you just miss something, it's going to be a long time until it gets back to it if you have a lot of memories programmed. Now, if you only have 10 memories, not as big an impact. So again, the Pro 404 wins that. Um, programming the memory channels. Manual. This is manual. Fairly easy with the scanner. You know, once you learn it, it's like three, three or four steps. That's it. That's it. On the UV5R, it's fairly complicated. At least the first time, it's fairly complicated. And it's so complicated that there are a number of YouTube videos showing you how to do it. That's how complicated it is. Now, if you use the software, it's a piece of cake. But then again, you got to have the cable, got to have the software. So, again, Pro 404 wins it. Okay, search band, surface, excuse me, service band search. The Pro 404 has that, yes. And it has fire, marine, air, amateur, and weather. A whole, whole bunch of... You just it's one button. Here it is. It's one button. It's these orange colored buttons, and you just push that button, and it scans those particular bands. Boom! Start scanning the whole band for what it's determined as air, what's determined as amateur bands, whatever. So, piece of cake. The uh, Bofang, of course, does not have that feature. And that's just one of the many features uh, that scanner radios have that the Bofang doesn't have related to scan. Now, the Bofang has a ton of features related to using it as an amateur handheld transceiver. But here we're just talking about using a Bofang as a scan. So obviously the Pro 404 wins that category. Cost. Now, this is a little confusing because, number one, as I said before, the they're no longer making the Pro 404. But you can find a lot of them on eBay, which is what I did. And, and, and this one came to me perfect, like brand new. So used, you can get those off of eBay for about $30. New, they don't have them anymore. But Whistler now has a replacement, the WS-1010, which is $80, and it adds a bunch of additional features that the 404 does not have. You go over to the Bofang, new, about $30. You can actually get it cheaper than that, but about $30. So price-wise, new to new, the UV-5R wins. 
And like I say, if you're interested in getting a handheld amateur transceiver, it's a pretty good bargain. Okay, the last thing, kind of a miscellaneous category, is the Pro 404 has a lots of other scanning features. The one I mentioned up here is a service span search. The Bofang, <laughs> and it's not related to scanning, but of course it is a transfer. So you can decide on that one. Again, if you're looking for a scanner radio versus a transceiver that has scanning capability. So, in my opinion, and everybody is entitled to an opinion, and please, comments, I love comments on this, uh, things I've missed, mistakes I've made, I would love to hear from you. But, in my opinion, I would say that the Bofang radios do not make good scanners. So, I'm a little set back by these people advertising the Bofang radios as scanners. I think it's a little misleading. So anyway, like I say, I'm looking for your comments. Um, so please leave a comment. If you enjoyed Jojo, I don't know if you enjoyed I almost got through a show without totally flubbing up. I didn't make it. Anyway, if you enjoyed this show, please give me a thumbs up. And if you haven't subscribed, subscribe. Goodbye. Hit the wrong button. <laughs>